Hey guys, it's Reese from Tech Customs, and we're here with Chris from Wheeling Wisely, and we're just about to do a quick demo on a winch pole. He's gonna give everyone a quick tutorial. We are doing a two-line pole, which means we're going from the vehicle out to a tree, back to another tree. The reason we're doing that is because that pulley that's in the middle doubles our power of our winch. So instead of our winch being 8,000 pounds, it's 16,000 pounds, and we're going back to a second tree rather than to a vehicle. So we've got 8,000 pounds on the vehicle and 8,000 pounds on the other tree. Vehicle's happier, less strain, less work. Awesome, and one more question, Chris. What can you tell us about Wheeling Wisely and the courses that you offer, and why should people check you guys out? Wheeling Wisely is an initiative of the Four Wheel Drive Association of British Columbia, and the idea is to teach new 4x4s, or even experienced 4x4s that want more information about 4x4ing safely, environmentally friendly, and getting more skills in their skill set. I don't need your help, I don't need anybody's help. I'll be just fine. Everything's on the Four Wheel Drive Association website, Four Wheel Drive Association of British Columbia. And our two courses right now are Introduction to Off-Road and Introductory Recovery Skills. We will be adding more courses in the future, but for this fall, that's all we've got. Our main thing is backcountry access. That's our entire initiative, keeping the backcountry open for all users. And that doesn't mean just 4 by 4s we work with other recreation groups. Um, but when you join the association, you're supporting keeping backcountry access for everyone. There are some perks. You get a discount at Lord Co. You get a discount at some other businesses. But the main thing is just supporting that backcountry advocacy. We are part of the Four Wheel Drive Association Wheeling Wisely training team. Right now we have two courses that we're offering. The first is just introduction to off-road. Just the basics of learning your vehicle. Um, you know, when to use low range, what's a locker, and then some basic driving techniques, you know, how to climb a hill, go through a little uh, mud hole over some rocks, things like that. And then the second course is our recovery techniques course. So this is just a tiny little snippet out of our recovery techniques course. Actually do two lines rather than just connecting straight to a tree. By using the pulley, you're doubling your pulling power. So your 8,000 pound winch is now a 16,000 pound winch by running through a pulley block, giving yourself a mechanical advantage. It says it's an 8,000 pound winch, but does that mean it's always an 8,000 pound winch? No, it's not. It's 8,000 pounds on the first wrap of the drum. It's like a, a lever. Every wrap you go around, you're putting more leverage against your motor. So by the time you're four or five wraps around your drum, your 8,000 pound winch is now only maybe a 5,000 or 6,000 pound winch. Right. So the other thing that doing this double line does is it gets more rope off of the drum, get down to that first layer where we've got the maximum pulling power. Even if you don't need all that pulling power, doing that first wrap, having your, your winch as efficient as possible means you're gonna pull faster, it's less load on your vehicle, less stress on your rope, just it's friendlier on all your components. Break time, be right back. You got everything you need to get outfitted and roll in style right here at tagcustoms.com. I'm talking wheels, rims, tonal covers, mud flaps, anything you need right here at tagcustoms.com. You're home for everything, parts, and accessories. Most vehicles alternators cannot actually keep up with the pulling power of a winch, which means your alternator and your battery are powering your winch. You need to pull two, three, four times, your battery's done, it's only putting out half the amperage now, you're only running off your alternator. Now your 8,000 pound winch is maybe only a 3,000 pound winch because it can't get the power it needs. So the easier you go on your equipment, the less maintenance you'll have to do, the happier your vehicle will be. High amperage, this is not a place to use a Princess Auto Park. High amperage kill switch, just like you see on the back of a drag race car if you've ever seen that. Flip it on when you need your winch. Flip it off when you're done with your winch. It's never gonna start up when you don't want it. From my winch, out to my pulley block. A pulley block that has been used for wire rope cannot be used for synthetic rope afterwards. You can't have any burrs in here or it will destroy your rope. Down on the other end here, I've got a thimble end. Hooks are more common. I like the thimbles because once I put this on my shackle, it cannot fall off. Whereas a hook can fall off, so you can think you're all rigged properly. All of a sudden you get a little bump in your rope and your hook falls off and you're not connected anymore. These are not expensive. You can get them off Amazon for like 40 bucks. It's called a closed system where nothing can fall apart. So when we're hooking on here, Brian's holding this, screw threads down. You don't want to screw up. You're going to put the pin through facing down. And the reason for that is 
if he fumbles that pin right now, it's not going anywhere. But if you're working in a mud hole and you're trying to flip it up and whoops, it slips, bye bye pin, you're not finding it again. If you're attaching with a hook, you always want to put the hook upwards. Hooks will stretch and bend over time. And if that hook opens up, you want it to open up and go to ground, not open up and fly up in the air. So think hook up and don't screw up. The two sections of strap, so they're not getting pinched. One's layered over the other. Never try and squeeze them in side by side. You'll pinch and damage the fabric in the middle. One final thing too, when you put a pin in, tighten it down, back it off a quarter turn. That pulling and stretching can jam that pin in. If you don't do that, you're gonna need a wrench or a screwdriver or something to get that off. So now this is connected. Now this is a live line. In theory, if the vehicle shifted, or if my winch started, this would get tension in it. I will never step over this line like this at this point. You have major arteries right here. If this snaps up and catches that artery, you're dead in 45 seconds. If I do need to cross this line at this point, I'll put my foot on the line and step over. If this gets tight now, yes, I may fly five feet in the air. Might not be too happy when I land, but at least I'm still gonna be alive. You have the choice walk around. Yeah. So now my line's hooked up, turning on my switch for my winch. Now I'm hooking up my winch controller. Oh, one other thing I didn't say yet for safety is gloves. <laughs> Especially if you have a metal winch line, a steel line, always wear gloves. You get these really sharp burrs on them. They will puncture right into you and they are really hard to get out. So these are actually rated as cut resistant gloves. Even with the synthetic line, use gloves. You can pick up a burr, a bramble, a piece of metal, embed it into the line and it will cut you apart. You also never let a line slide through your hands. If you need to handle it, you're doing hand over hand. The other thing that's important is that your wraps on your drum stay nice and tight. So what I'm gonna do here is just bring in my slack in the line. Ready? Yeah. Okay, now we're tight, now we're ready to winch. If you have the choice, you will always have your vehicle running when you're winching. Remember I mentioned battery power and alternator power? Right now I'm only running on battery. That's gonna limit my winching. Running the, the engine, bring it up to like 2,500, 3,000 RPM. Because your maximum power for your alternator isn't at idle, it's with the revs up. Now you guys can see, I'm hooked from my winch to my tree, to my tree saver, never wrapping around the tree because that'll cut the bark on the tree and kill it back to another tree over here. Now I could come back to my Jeep. That would still give me my double pulling power, but there's an advantage to doing it this way. My other line is going over to this tree. That's 8,000 pounds of stress there. If I had both these lines coming back to the front of my Jeep, I'd be putting 16,000 pounds of stress on my bumper brackets. Instead of putting 8,000 pounds of stress on my bumper brackets and 8,000 pounds of stress on another tree. Much happier Jeep doing it this way. <laughs> So unless you're by yourself and you have no other choice, you're gonna have a person inside operating the vehicle and you have the winch controller in there with you. A wrap get around the mirror, so even if it gets dropped, it's not going down in the mud. Winching instructions come from the rigging industry. For stop, we use the military style stop like this. Holy crap, stop right now. Just crossed arms. And then winching in, pulling up, and then for letting the winch out is down and you can also go a little bit. So you can go up a little bit or down a little bit. Now, if this was a really stuck situation, we'd have a safety radius of whatever the length of our line is. Whatever your length of line is, that's your safety distance. Because these things can snap hard. So when a steel cable goes, it goes flailing like this and spirals through the air. Also, the steel cable has sharp edges. The synthetic cable does not. So even if it hits you, it's gonna cut you, but it's probably not gonna cut, cut right through a bone the way a steel cable will when it snaps. 60% of the time, it works every time. And now we're gonna do our pull in. Ninety percent of the time off-road, that's actually as far as you needed to go. You were hung up on a log. You're trying to get out of a creek. You need to bump up the last little bit of a, uh, a mud pit. Don't do more than you have to, because 
from this pull, all my rope now is at that end of the, uh, the spool. And especially if you've got a fairly small spool winch with the crossbars on it, you really have to watch out for that. Because if you're pulling from the side and you bunch up all your cable on one end, you can actually put pressure on those crossbars and literally pop your winch in half. You don't want to do that. Break time, be right back. You want to build your next vehicle, whether it be a 4 x 4 overland rig, a performance streetcar, or a lifted truck. We'll walk you through every step of the build to ensure your dreams become your reality. To get started, send us in inquiry at techcustoms.com. All right, guys, there we go. We just finished the quick demo. That was super cool. And if you want any more info on the four-wheel driver station and their Wheeling Wisely courses, you know we're big advocates and big fans of what all the work they do over there. We just wanted to go show them a little bit of love and show them a little bit of promo. Uh, so go check out their stuff. Go check out Wheeling Wisely. Uh, just FYI, every Tag Customs Builds comes with a membership to the four-wheel drive association. So if you were interested in getting one, thinking about buying one, if you're one of our customers, you should have already got one. And if you're a past customer that hasn't been retrofitted yet, just let us know that you're a past customer. Show us it, and then we'll get you outfitted with a new membership for a year. One, you get bonus discounts at Tag Customs. We have our own discounts. I'll list them down in the description below to get the exact numbers. Mosquitoes flying around everywhere. And also for past Tag Customs customers, we're planning on doing some Wheeling Wisely courses just for you guys coming up soon. We're gonna we're working, talking with Chris and the other guys over there to figure out the details to get all of our customers educated and up to date on the best practices of wheeling wisely. If you really want to get the most out of your four-wheel drive experience in BC, your membership is really the best way to do it to make sure you get to all the exclusive, well-taken-care-of trails that you want to be a part of. So check out the four-wheel driving station, check out Wheeling Wisely, and see you in the next one.